Hey everyone, so today I want to talk about the exterior design differences between GT350s and GT500. Now, despite both these cars being based off the same S550 platform, there's a lot of design differences between these cars. Now, from the front end, all Shelby's came from the factory with splitters. And you see you have the Shelby punched into the center section of the splitter itself. Some of the differences are that on GT350s, the splitters were smaller. On the 350Rs, they were bigger, especially on the corners here versus on the GT500s, all the splitters were the same. Only difference was if you opted for a base car with the handling package or a carbon fiber track pack, it would also come with a set of these splitter wickers on the quarters. Now these were separate from the splitter, they had to be mounted after the splitter went on, but you can see it makes the corner protrude considerably more similar to the 350R. So if you own one of these cars, you kind of have to be mindful of that when you're walking around it, not to catch your feet on the bottom of them. Now from the front, one of the most blaring differences is the way they designed it. With this, the upper and lower grill sections, this is a little bit more of a traditional style. It's body matched all the way across versus on the GT500s, this is how they broke it up. All GT500s, they did this black center section on. And on the corner, on the driver's side, they have GT500 punched into the plastic. That is the only place on a GT500 where it says GT500 on the exterior of the car. So uh, that's probably the most obvious difference on the front of these cars. Now, with the design of the 350s, they decided to just go with an unpainted plastic for all the plastic trim around the cars up through the grill section, the turn signal housings versus on the 500. This is where they kind of broke it up a little bit. The lower section here, on the front fascia, they decided to do a basically almost an identical setup to the 350s with the unpainted plastic. But uh, on the center sections, this is where they broke it up. To match this painted black center section, the turn signal housing assemblies are painted black to match it. So, I mean, I think these are both a nice design. They're just different from each other, and they're very noticeably different from each other. Uh, on the 350s, one thing that they never did that a lot of people were kind of disappointed about and kind of took matters into their own hands was a tow hook. There was no tow hook mount available on 350s at all ever from the factory, but that was a popular aftermarket setup versus on the GT500. You have this little tiny door here and it has back there, it has a basically stud welded onto the front crash bar that a factory tow hook does thread into. So that's a really nice thing that they picked up on and decided to do with this car. So it's a lot easier to tow this car than this car. Now, uh, the overall design of these cars is very similar in terms of all the openings on the front, upper and lower radiator grill sections, and you have the corners on both ends for all the various coolers on these cars. Ford really did a good job putting coolers on everything on these cars. Now, the meshing is a little bit different. The meshing on this is a little bit more pronounced, a little bit thicker on the 350s versus on the 500s. This is a much, much thinner meshing, almost like a chicken wire. Uh, this, despite it being so thin, it looks like it's metal. It's not, it's plastic. You drive one of these cars, you gotta be mindful of that, especially like when you're washing and cleaning them. That is a very, very thin plastic. So just keep that in mind uh, when you're working on the car, doing anything with the car. There's much higher potential to break that, much easier than something much thicker like this. Now, the grills on the front of them also have the logos, obviously. With all the 350s, the logos were offset to the passenger side. 350s, they were still like a silver gray color. 350Rs, they were red. And then all the Heritage cars got a blue style logo versus on the 500, they stuck that big gigantic Cobra right in the front, I believe in the center. I believe that that is the largest Cobra logo ever put on a Mustang. Now, on the front, if you look really close, despite this grill opening being very large, this upper grill section, they have basically sort of a restrictor plate on the front of this car, and that's to keep too much air from going underneath the hood and becoming turbulent. This car being naturally aspirated, it does not need as much air to breathe, and it does not generate nearly as much heat as that car does. So they really didn't need as much air to go under the hood. So rather than it going under the hood and creating hood flutter and creating high pressure under the hood, they basically put that little restrictor plate on there versus on this car. This thing being forced induction, the dual clutch transmission, this thing needs a lot more air to breathe and keep cool. So you have a much larger opening on this thing. There's almost no restriction on the opening on this thing to allow a lot more air to get into the car and then be able to pull the heat out and also really just let the engine breathe. Now, one thing that is very similar, or basically exactly the same on these cars that they did not change were the headlight designs. For the S550s from 15 to 19, they did this style headlights, and from 2018 to 2023, which is supposed to be the last year of production for the S550, they did an updated headlight. That's one thing they never changed on the Shelby. Despite this car being produced, 
15 to 20, and this car being produced 20 to 22. They use the early headlight designs on all Shelbys. That is without exception. They never did the updated headlight designs that they did on the standard Mustang. And I think these headlights look good. I, I have no issue with them at all. And now moving up to the hoods on these cars. Just like I'm like talking about on the front end, this car does not need nearly as much cooling as that car does. They did not put as big of an opening on the hoods of this car. This essentially has a small cowl vent on here that allows the air to escape from underneath the hood, both from pressure and also helps to pull the heat out of the car. So um, unfortunately with some of these early Mustangs, they kind of suffer from hood flutter, from pressure building up underneath the hoods at high speed. So the corners of the hoods tend to dance a little bit at high speed versus on this car, they don't because this is one of the first factory cars I believe Ford did that had hood pins on. This is a new style rather than having traditional pin. This just push the center section with your thumb to open the hood. And this helps keep the hood from dancing around at high speed. And obviously another huge design difference was the massive heat extractor that they put on these cars. Now, all the 500s had this style hood extractor on it, and they also came from the factory with what they called a rain tray. So Ford recommended if you're street driving the cars, leave that plastic rain tray in. It basically has little gutters on it that allow water to run down just behind the radiator and not pool on top of the engine. And they say if you're racing or tracking the car, take that off. Me personally, I leave that thing off. I want this engine to be able to breathe as much as possible and get the heat away from the engine. Even just sitting idling this car, you cannot believe the tremendous amount of heat that this engine generates. You're sitting in traffic, you can just see the heat pouring out from those vents, from the louvers. So I think this is a really great thing they did to help really help extract the heat from underneath the hood. When you're moving along, it really helps pull it out and get it up and away from the car itself. Now, because this has the much taller center section on it, this hood is raised considerably more. It might not look like it on camera when you're sitting in this car, you can definitely see that center section of the hood protrude up considerably higher. Uh, this hood, since it doesn't need the hood clearance for the supercharger on it, it sits much lower and you really don't even see this hood when you're driving the car. So, and then going up to the, through the windshield and the roof line of the car, all that's pretty much the same since it's based off the same platform of the car. So let's go ahead and take a look at the difference of the sides of the car. Now on the sides of the cars, that's where you start to see a little bit more similarity between the cars. Since they're both based off the same S550 platform, the overall lines of the side of the cars are basically identical. The roof line, the way the windows are set up all the way down to the back of the car, it's basically the same on both cars. It's really the same on all the S550 Mustangs since the chassis are all the same. Now on the fenders, that's where you start to notice some differences. On the GT350s, they opted for this fender vent here. Now this is functional, helps extract heat away from the engine compartment, helps pressure from building up in the wheel wells. That's a nice thing Ford did with these cars. They didn't get gimmicky with all these fake vents all these car companies do. Now, all the vents on these cars are actually functional versus on the 500, for whatever reason, they decided not to do those vents. I'm sure one of the main reasons was they had that massive set of louvers on the hood, so they probably didn't need as much cooling from the fender vents themselves. Now, on the 350s, all GT350s got a GT350 on the fender itself. All the GT500s got the Cobra logo, this more modern updated Cobra logo from the one that they used to use years ago. Door design, exactly the same. Door handles, exactly the same. They're all painted, keyless entry. Put your hand behind here to unlock the door. Put your thumb here to lock it. Mirrors are identical on all the Shelbys. Uh, all have black mirror caps. They never tried to color match anything. They just left them all black and said, uh, that works. Uh, if you opt for a tech package car, you get the integrated turn signal on the bottom. Moving to the rear of the car, Basically the same design. The, overall, the Shelbys are a little bit wider than the, uh, the standard Mustangs to help incorporate the larger wheels and tires a little bit more, but the overall shape is basically the same. Uh, they put the little bit of a rock guard on the back of the car, but not on the front. I wish they had done that. That's one thing I highly recommend to any Shelby owner, put a rock guard on the front wheel. It'll help keep the rocks from getting shotgunned down the side of the car and damaging it. Uh, you have the drivers, the uh, fuel door mounted on the driver's side. It does not lock. It just pushes open with your thumb. It's a capless fuel filler so just keep that in mind depending on where you live and then on the lower section here the rockers are all both unpainted plastic they're basically the same overall design but with the 500s you have for the slightly larger piece right here uh, that's another thing just be mindful of walking around the car getting in and out you shouldn't really have a problem getting in and out with that piece but it is larger just keep that in mind uh, and you'll see the brakes are basically the overall same setup on these cars all 350rs got red calipers the base 350s they were like a grayish black color two-piece rotors, six piston front, four piston rear, basically the same setup as this car. All the 500s got red calipers. 
two-piece rotors, six-piston front, four-piston rear, 15 and a half inch brakes on the front, 16 and a half, more thermal capacity on this car just also because it's heavier too. Really the only huge difference with these brakes is in the back you have this being an electronic parking brake, this has a separate caliper, a little small little separate caliper for the parking brake versus on this car. This basically has like a drum style behind the rotor itself for the parking brake, and this is a mechanical, so that's really the only difference. Now, probably the most obvious difference on these cars, being the higher performance variants, are going to be the carbon fiber wheels. Uh, this is the first, Ford was the first manufacturer to offer a mass-produced carbon fiber wheel on a relatively affordable car. The car didn't cost hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. So I give Ford a lot of credit for working with Carbon Revolution, an amazing Australian company that manufactures real carbon fiber wheels. Both of these wheels are real carbon fiber. This is not like an alloy wheel with a, a carbon fiber overlay or something like that. These are carbon fiber through and through, the barrels, the spokes, the only metal on these wheels are the spacers between the back side of the wheel and the front of the rotor. It's basically to handle the torque from the lug nuts because the carbon can't handle that kind of pressure from torquing lug nuts. So that's the only metal. The actual wheels themselves, 100% carbon fiber. Now, when they started to, to do this car in 2015, when they started the production of this car, I believe there's a little bit of concern on Ford's end of could Carbon Revolution mass produce the wheels on this car and have them look good from a cosmetic standpoint? I don't think there was an, ever an issue with the structural integrity of these wheels. A lot of people say these wheels are weak and flimsy and that kind of stuff. I don't believe any of that stuff. They've done a ton of testing on these wheels. Yes, people have damaged and broke these wheels and are more susceptible to things like curb rash and whatnot. You can damage an alloy wheel you know, just as easily. You can damage a uh, carbon fiber wheel if you catch it wrong. But overall, these wheels are super strong and they don't flex like an alloy wheel will. So getting back into it, Ford was a little bit nervous. Could they mass produce this wheel on a large scale for a mass produced car and still have the weave look good? That was the big question. Simple answer was, you know what, let's not worry about it. Just paint them all black and let's call it a day. So all 15 to 20 GT500, or GT350 Rs have black carbon fiber wheels. They're all 19 inch. They're all the same design and they all come with cup twos from the factory. Only difference front to back is you have a different size wheel. The back's about half an inch wider. The fronts have the ceramic spray on coating to protect the carbon from the heat. That's really the only difference. And as you would expect, these wheels are really expensive. On the GT500 carbon fiber track pack. Five years later, Ford wanted to do carbon fiber wheels on another Mustang. This was the third mass produced, well, semi mass produced vehicle they did for Ford. This was the first one, the Ford GT. Carbon fiber wheels came second, and the GT500 carbon fiber track pack was number three. So, the difference with these wheels is these are 20 inch wheels. All the carbon fiber track pack cars have cup twos from the factory, but Ford, I assume, wanted to do an exposed carbon fiber. Some people like exposed, some people like colored wheels, they like subtle, some people like more in your face. I kind of like that a little bit more. I mean, it just looks like a million bucks. So, the question was, would they be able to do it? And I assume Carbon Revolution had proved themselves to Ford and said, look, we can mass produce these on a large scale, keep the supply up and have them look good and not have a lot of issues with the overall cosmetic design of the wheel. And these things look absolutely fantastic. You know, the weaves look really good. Overall, they are virtually perfect. You will sometimes find imperfections on the back side of the wheel, but you don't see that, so it's kind of irrelevant. But overall, the design of these wheels is absolutely incredible. It looks amazing. Like I said, this is real high gloss carbon fiber, and it looks amazing. The wheels are expensive, but it looks absolutely incredible. Now, one subtle thing that you may have noticed if you are in the market for GT500s or if you own one is you may have seen this style wheel painted black. What's that about? It is a carbon fiber wheel. That was a 21 only option. Ford offered the carbon fiber handling package, basically to go between the base cars and the carbon fiber track pack cars to go right in the middle. Essentially what was happening was, even though they were mass producing these things and the overall the weaves were coming out really good, there were still some that came out and were cosmetically not perfect. So they couldn't use them as a carbon fiber track pack wheel. So what do you do with all these expensive carbon fiber wheels you got laying around? You paint them black, just like on this car. So they offered the carbon fiber handling package, which was basically the base GT500s. And instead of just the handling package, it offered the same aspects of the handling package plus the carbon fiber wheel. They painted it black, and now they had something that they were able to do with all those cosmetically imperfected carbon fiber track pack wheels. They just painted them black. So that was a 2021 only option that they did, I assume, by, with all the supply chain issues by, in by 22. They basically 
really weren't too many left with the imperfections, so they cut that package. So if you ever see a GT500, which looks like carbon fiber track pack wheels, but they're black, it's probably a carbon fiber handling package. Look at the, uh, look at the wing on the back. If it's got a base style wing, that's exactly what it is. So uh, let's get these things turned around. Let's take a look at the back. And finally, onto the rear of the Shelbys. Some very significant differences, but also a lot of subtle similarities. Just like all the S550s have the third brake light top mounted just above the rear window. Those are all the same. And then just in front of that, you have the antennas. Most of the 350s got the smaller puck style antenna. Towards the end of production of this car, they went to the larger shark fin style that most, if not all, the GT500s have. They do the same thing, just a different look. Uh, probably the most obvious difference on the back of these cars are going to be the wings. Being the higher performance variants of these cars, they get true wings, actual airfoils on the back of these cars. The base versions of these cars get spoilers or swings depending on what year you opted for. And they use the same design language on the wings that they use on the wheels of each respective car. All the 350Rs got a non-adjustable, very expensive carbon fiber rear wing. And just like the wheels, they're painted gloss black to match. Same thing with the GT500, just like with the beautiful high gloss carbon fiber wheels, they did that same treatment on the wing itself. This is also, as you would expect, a very expensive wing. One of the main differences other than cosmetic being this is an adjustable wing. It has two positions available. They recommend the position it's in now, which is essentially a neutral position where it's flat for street driving. You're gonna track drive the car, they recommend you put it in the other position where it's a little bit nose down and the back's a little bit up more to create a little bit more downpour. So non-adjustable, slightly adjustable, gloss black, exposed carbon fiber. Both look really good. The trunks on the cars are basically the same, same platform, they didn't change the design of the trunk or the shape or anything like that, they're exactly the same. Uh, one thing that they did update, unlike the headlights on these cars, they did do different taillights. Now when the S550 started production 2015, all of them had this vertical style tail light. And on the base Mustangs, they updated the headlights in 2018. However, on the 350s, they never updated the tail lights. All GT350s, whether R or base, 15 to 20, all have the vertical style tail lights from the factory. Versus the GT500s, when they started production in 2020, this is the tail light that all the regular Mustangs were using. So they went with this. This is the, known as the boomerang style, where it's curved on the top and the bottom. The actual shape, the overall diameter and shape of these lights housings are the same. So you will see people changing these things around just to do something different since they are interchangeable. You could swap these around. The overall functionality is the same. It's just a slightly different design, vertical versus slightly curved. Now the center sections, very similar. You get the same beautiful piano black high gloss on the center section with this trim piece cut in the middle. The early 350s did not have this. They were just all flat. And then each respective car has the logo. This being an R model, it has the red snake with the GT350 below it. This same thing, you have these design cut into it with the very large, more modern looking Cobra in it. Uh, the overall bumper shape is pretty much the same. There's really almost no differences there. Obviously, you have the center mounted license plate. You have the lights for the license plate, obviously, just above it. And then kind of hidden that most people don't know is there's an actual trunk release in the very center of the bumper there. Now, the lower sections, just like on the rockers on both cars and the lower front sections, you have unpainted flat plastic, basically, for the lower valance on the cars. A little bit of a different design, but the overall functionality is basically the same. You have these actual vents on the bottom, just like on all the other vents on these cars, these are functional. Both of these cars have factory differential coolers. Now there's a pan underneath in the back of the car that has kickups on it that run air through the rear differential cooler and those vents on the back are where that heat exhausts from. So just like all the other vents on these cars, it is functional. And then on the center of both cars below the license plate, you have just a basic halogen reverse light for the car. Pretty simple, nothing really special there. But the overall shape and mission is the same on the rear of both these cars. They just have a little bit of a different design. And then finally, the exhaust tips. That's another difference on these cars. This is larger on the GT500. And with this car, the tips are actually built into the pipe and the actual muffler itself versus on this car. These tips are actually bolted on to the bumper and the pipe the exhaust basically just kind of mates up to it. That was done basically as sort of heat shielding to keep it from melting it. 
um, because on this car, the bottom here, the plastic does go underneath the tips themselves versus on this car, there's nothing below the tips on the GT500. So um, some very significant differences, but both these cars basically have the same setup overall on the rear of them. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.